cloud-powered distributed data center heated hot water. Sounds a bit science fiction to me, but according to Heater, they can solve this home energy heating conundrum with the cloud. And I'm hoping it really isn't science fiction. If you want to see, touch and feel everything electric in real life, join us at one of our fully charged live shows around the world. Next up, we're coming to Canada, so get your tickets today. Well, the Heater solution is basically taking a server from a data center repackaging it and then putting it into people's homes um, and we attach it to uh, vented domestic hot water cylinders and that enables us to capture the waste heat from the computer processing into the hot water and provide free hot water for the household at the same time. Before we get into this properly I think it's worth trying to define a couple of terms because I will admit I had to take to Google to try and work out what a data centre actually is but broadly speaking we've got a data centre that's basically a big building filled with computers they're filled with servers, those are the computers, those servers are made of CPUs, and those are the sort of brain of the server doing all of the data processing, storage, hosting websites, running applications, etc, etc. And lastly, the cloud, not some magical ethereal thing, but the way in which we can access all of that information uh, remotely from any device. And just about everything that we do depends on data centers, from Zoom calls to streaming services to YouTube to gaming, just about everything. So it is no wonder that they use so much electricity. And worse than that, they get hot and all of that energy is wasted. And then you need to use even more electricity to try and cool them down. There are examples across the world where data centers are being used for district heat networks. But as heat is difficult to transport, this is only viable in areas very close by to the data centers. So what about the rest of us? How do you bring the data center closer to home? What Heater uh, does is we're not doing real-time services, um, so uh, supporting apps or websites. We're doing sort of offline batch processing. Um, so a good example of that would be 3D rendering, for example. So what, what we do is we take the files from a client, we send them to the, our servers on the hot water cylinders, then that spends a number of hours, could even be days, uh, processing that image. Once that's complete, that gets then sent back to us and then we deliver that to the client. Heater has started with vented hot water cylinders and as the most inefficient cylinders and with a staggering 8 million of them in the UK, the overall potential is huge. But how much heat can each of these small servers generate in each home? Each heater unit, as it's currently set up, uh, delivers about 200 watts uh, per hour into the, into the water. So over, if it ran for 24 hours, uh, it would deliver about 4.8 kilowatt hours of hot water, um, which is roughly equivalent to what an average UK household would use in a day. And so with the, the servers not being operational for 24 hours, we, we, we reckon we can deliver about 80% of an average UK household's hot water. Often we'll be um, setting jobs off to run overnight. So, uh, so in the morning, the cylinder will be you know, at temperature, the hot water will be there. Um, in the event that they say they have three showers, you know, one after another in the morning or something like that, and suddenly the hot water isn't there, then the, the primary heating system would kick in to top up uh, the hot water. So we always work alongside the, the primary heating system. We're not uh, responsible for all of the hot water in the, in the home. So this all sounds very interesting in theory, but I really want to test my understanding to see if I've actually understood this. Um, and I'm actually sat next to a real heater server inside someone's airing cupboard, so I can confirm that this is real. So let's for a moment imagine that I am a 3D rendering company. Ordinarily, I might send all of my stuff to be processed in a single data center. Well, this is no different, but instead of going to a single data center, it's going across many, many different servers, and these servers live within your airing cupboard. So they're not sending heat through the cloud, still sending data through the cloud. That is running the processing or getting the processing to start. That's generating heat and via a heat exchanger and then a hot plate that transfers that heat into your hot water cylinder. Now, of course, that processing is using electricity. So you might be thinking, well, I'm using more electricity. I might not be using gas, but how is that in any way advantageous to me? How on earth can I be saving money? Well, the electricity that's using, being used to do the processing is metered and Heater will pay you for it. And you might still be thinking, well again, well then how does Heater make any money? Well of course me, as 3D rendering company, I would be paying to use a data center and that would be for the processing and for the cost of running that data center. And so again, this is really no different. 
but actually you get to benefit from the data processing that's going on. Peter had recently started a trial, and so we wanted to visit one of the participants to find out how it was going. Yeah, so it was installed about uh, a month ago, um, and I think the unit's been switched on you know, fairly recently over the last uh, week or so, um, and during that time we've definitely used less uh, gas to heat the, the hot water. I haven't noticed any change in temperature, so that's, that's a good thing. It's certainly been you know, hot enough. Um, I haven't noticed it being too hot, not hot. It's, it's, as I say, it's, it's almost invisible. You know, I, I know it's there, but, but for us as a family, no real difference. Our digital dependence shows absolutely no sign of abating and apparently by 2030 they're going to account for 8% of the world's electricity usage. And sure, they could be renewably powered and they could be made more efficient, but there just seems zero point in wasting that heat and not using it for something useful. So where are we and how is this going to scale and when can we see this in all of our homes? Um, I mean, we're, we're looking at actually to sort of build uh, relationships with uh, social housing groups with a view to installing uh, units uh, when we come out of the end of this trial. Um, but as a consumer, um, it will probably be you know, a year plus, uh, I'd imagine, if, you, if, if it was a direct purchase uh, with us. And we're still looking at how the model works in terms of you know, social uh, landlords and you know, at scale, um, and also direct, um, direct sales with you know, interested consumers like, like your audience. So great for homeowners, Great for landlords wanting an easy solution to improve EPC ratings, but also fantastic for businesses to lower their carbon footprint. In fact, a 3D rendering company could lower their emissions by 50% using heater servers. But the big elephant in the room, surely there are data security concerns, and is it a big burden on your Wi-Fi? Security is um, definitely something that comes up quite often when we're talking about the heater network. Um, the way really to think about it is that um, it's like working from home. You know, we're all quite familiar with the VPNs, you know, enabling us to access our um, businesses' sort of private data. Um, you know, banks, uh, employees will do that if they're working from home. And so our uh, servers are just kind of just using that same technology that we're very familiar with there, um, but they're, so it's an automated worker, if you like. Um, so it's sort of like our servers are kind of working from home. Um, the, the Wi-Fi for the house or the internet for the house is, is not particularly fast. Um, so again, that was a question during, during the installation, you know, would I, would I notice it? Um, I, I don't have any ways of, of monitoring it, but, but certainly, you know, I work from home. I haven't noticed any interruptions to, you know, um, Zoom type calls or anything like that. Um, so no, no, no downsides from a, from a usage perspective at all. With the elephant in the room addressed, what's next for heater? And is there a way to combine it with other low carbon technology? So, yes, yeah, so we've rented cylinders now, but in the future we, we've got a, a test unit with Mixergy um, with a view to getting a system, a heat unit that can work with pressurised cylinders. Um, obviously they're you know, popular at the moment, they're uh, being installed in many places and in fact as part of our trial outreach we had lots of people sign up who had pressurised cylinders, so we've actually got a nice list of people that we could contact uh, with a view to a pilot of that system. Um, but that's probably the, our, our next focus um, of development in addition to, to uh, updating the, the heater unit as it stands and looking at how we can refine that coming out of the back of the trial. Well, I think I've been convinced. Distribute your data centre, put it in airing cupboards, use excess heat to heat hot water. It's logical, it's sensible, and there should be more of it. And actually, this isn't science fiction. This is perhaps the Robin Hood of the computing and heating world. <laughs>